Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 18. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this series, we carry this video series out on the first of every month. And while it is called Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, the analysis is actually carried out on the entire cryptocurrency asset classes market capitalization. We do this on the first of every month so that we can stay updated on where we are in the current cryptocurrency market cycle. If we were to provide updates every day, there's just not a whole lot that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. So checking in once a month on this model, I think makes a lot of sense, okay? Now, why do we call it the beauty of mathematics? Well, I, for one, really enjoy mathematics myself. And, and you know, it's one of those things that you can find everywhere in nature, in ferns, in clovers, in so many different plants uh, all around the world. And in so many other things in nature, you will find mathematics. You can describe things that happen in our world a lot of times by using mathematics. And so the whole idea with crypto is, is it possible to better understand the cryptocurrency asset class with a bit of dubious mathematics? And that is what we've been doing. And this, again, is part 18 in this series. Now, actually, we've done more videos on this than 18. We actually had several videos before we started part one. Uh, so maybe this is you know, unofficially part 21 or 22 or something for all I know. But we wanna keep carrying out this analysis and so let us go ahead and jump in. This is the chart, right? And as of December 1st, 2021, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at a very modest 2.64 trillion with the fair value logarithmic regression trend line which as i'll remind you is a monotonically increasing function coming in at a more humble 1.14 trillion this represents an overvaluation of approximately 132 percent but i would not let the word overvaluation scare you because bitcoin should theoretically stay in the overvaluation territory and the entire asset class for, for multiple years once it's up there. You go back and look at prior cycles and you can see we did spend a decent amount of time in overvaluation territory. And every single time we went to the top of the green dashed logarithmic regression curve. And while you might look at this and think that we're relatively close to it, on the contrary, you can see that the entire asset class based on this upper green line is only you know maybe four or five months from where this green line would be at approximately 10 trillion dollars for the entire asset class and since again we're only at 2.64 trillion it would stand a reason that there still is a decent ways to go for this for this market cycle okay so again you look at this chart and you'll notice a couple of things there tend to be these long drawn out bear markets that tend to be best for accumulation albeit that is when most people do not like to accumulate. And then you also have these periods where we go into mania bull runs that last for years sometimes. And, and so far, this one that we're currently in has been by far, by far the most tame. But this isn't really that unexpected. It's all in, the, I, I, it's all in line with the idea that every cycle is more or less going to give you some form of diminishing returns. And look, diminishing returns is a scary word for a lot of people, but it's just a fundamental thing that we have to acknowledge. And, and it's something that will likely happen within our, within our favorite asset class. It is much harder to move the asset if it has a much higher market capitalization. That's why Bitcoin once upon a time was able to go from a market capitalization of basically zero to a hundred million in one market cycle, okay? It can't do that anymore. It can't go up three orders of magnitude, more or less, in, in one market cycle, because it's just, it's too hard for it to do. Crypto back in, 
you know, 2020, we were at about 100 billion. And so, so far, we actually have gone up at least one order of magnitude. But to give you an idea, a three order of magnitude change would, would put us all the way up at 100 trillion, which again, is just highly likely not going to happen this market cycle. Although I do think we will make it there eventually, right? The curve will eventually get up to that $100 trillion mark. So I, I would argue that even within the grand scheme of the, the, the asset class, time is on our side, but also in the grand scheme of the market cycle, time is on our side as well. Now, one of the things I, I also like to look at is this curve. And, and I, I think it's important that people really take a moment to, to really look at this curve and, and digest it and, and, and look to see what I'm showing here. So a lot of people, you know, are, are really frantic about the asset class right now. And, you know, I, I've been adamant over the years that we should see lengthened cycles. And here we are, right? You know, the, the cycle has unofficially lengthened from the bottom. There are a lot of people saying that the cycle is over, that 69K is the market cycle top. I would strongly disagree. Um, I, I would also disagree with people that say, you know, 70 or 80K is the market cycle top. I think we have a ways to go. Of course, I, you know, no model is perfect, but according to the models that I use and that have been tracking relatively well this market cycle so far, I don't think 69K is the top. I also don't think 70 or 80K is the top. I think the top is over 100K for this market cycle. Uh, and I think we have a ways to go to get there, okay? So I know a lot of people are, are somewhat frantic right now and they're wondering why was November a down month for Bitcoin? We dropped 7% or so. This is not in line with what a lot of people were expecting. But if you look at the asset class as a whole and recognize that, look, we're, we're on a general long uptrend here, I think it makes a lot more sense than worrying about what happens in any given day uh, or any given week or even any given month for that matter. Right. Time is on our side. One day, I do imagine we will get to the top of this green line or somewhere close to it. And unfortunately, that will likely mean that we need to go down for a while. OK. Um, and, you know, best case scenario, we don't go down and we just go sideways until the, until the lower regression band catches up to us. But I'm guessing we're going to we're probably going to meet it somewhere in between over a relatively long period of time. Now, when you look at this chart, this yellow line that I drew it sort of just connects the bottom and the top of each cycle to the next one. And you'll notice that each time this gets extended out even further. And so the whole idea is, you know, why can't this next one extend out even further than the last one? So, you know, I'm speculating that the market cycle top for the asset class, as I've said for years, is not in 2021. I mean, I've said this for years now on the channel. I don't think it's in 2021. I also think it's important for any model uh, to sort of have like a, a, a point where you could say, well, I mean, maybe it maybe it is. Look, if, if Bitcoin goes, if the entire asset class goes to, say, seven or eight trillion by the end of December, then there's a good chance that's the market cycle peak. But if we're still just kind of slowly moving up, maybe we put in new all time highs, but we're not going to like 200K or anything like that, then I would still argue that we still have a long ways to go. So. You look at this chart, I think it makes a whole lot of sense. We can, I, I've noted before that I think, you know, we're going to have a market cycle peak uh, sometime beyond 2021. I think lengthen, lengthening cycles will play out. I think the cycle will, will extend beyond 2021 and we'll have a market cycle peak somewhere over in this region. Um, and, and the whole idea is, is looking at, at what has happened in the past and recognizing that, you know, the current cycle as it stands today to me, it looks like a stretched out version of 2013, but we identified this a year ago, I believe, back in December of 2020, January 2021. We talked about this being a, a very likely stretched out version of 2013. And now we can say that it's not a carbon copy of 2013 because 2013 had a market cycle peak in November. It went parabolic in November. And then in December, it actually came crashing back down. So clearly the idea that it's a stretched out version of 2013 at the very least is playing out because we did not have a market cycle peak in November unless 69K were the top, okay? So if 69K were the top, then that would have been the peak and it would have been uh, a very similar run as the last one, but there are a lot of differences. It wasn't really a parabolic move by Bitcoin to go to 69K. We're nowhere close to the top of our logarithmic regression trend line at the upper part of this region here. So I would still argue that 69K is not the market cycle top. 
And I, I also think that this top over here, as I mentioned back in April and May, I think it's just a local top. And obviously that has been proven correct now because we've gone to market capitalizations higher than what we saw back then. But up until recently, we couldn't make that claim, right? I mean, you know, the last few months when we've been doing these videos, we couldn't make the claim yet that we had put in a new higher high on the total market capitalization. It was only until recently that we can now say, all right, it does seem like that analysis was in fact right. Now, it's interesting that when you think about these overvaluation and undervaluation territories, and the whole idea is, well, can we take a, a, a percent difference between the total crypto market cap and the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, which I need to remind you, and we're going to go over this a few more times, it is a monotonically increasing function, so it goes up with time. What does that mean? It means if the entire asset class were just trend sideways for a while, eventually we would just get to the fair value, even if we don't actually go down. So imagine, I don't think this is going to happen, but imagine Bitcoin just stayed at 58K. I think it's around 57, 58K right now. Imagine if it just stayed at 58K for the next year, which I, I don't think it's going to do. But if it did, then eventually the entire asset class, the, the fair value would sort of catch up to it. OK, meaning the overvaluation would actually drop. So if this just went sideways, then this would drop from 132% overvaluation to eventually when it would run into the red line, then it would be 0% overvalued, it would be on the red line. So you have to remember that time is on our side in the sense that the longer it takes us to move up, the higher we should theoretically fly from the fair value. And I think that's best encapsulated or, or best shown in, in a chart like this, where you look at the percent difference between the market cap and the fair value, this is shifted by 100%, so we capture the undervaluation territory pretty well. Uh, and you note three prior market cycle peaks and, and the general undervaluation region, which is historically the best time to buy crypto. But again, you know, I would dubiously speculate now that a lot of you watching this are not going to be around the cryptocurrency asset class the next time we come back into this region. You'll probably be checked out doing something else and you don't want to care about crypto. But that is the best time to buy. And, and eventually we'll come back down to it. But again, by the time we come back down to it, the, the asset prices could be what they are today for all we know. OK, so I mean, like the, a future bear market bottom for Bitcoin could be even higher than the current prices or it could be around the current prices of 57, 50 K. I would argue that our, our, our theoretical bottom based on the 20 week moving average holding, if history is any indication, is 40K. Um, but you could also argue that our recent wick to the bull market support band again at around 50K maybe has provided that as support as well. But I think we have a little bit more work to do to prove that and see if we can continue staying above it on a weekly time frame. OK, so, um, you know, I've noted before that this looks like a, a local top back in April and May similar to what we saw in 2013. And then we also said that it looks like a stretched out version of 2013. I think that's playing out because if you look at 2013, 2013 sort of just had this one move here and then we just had liftoff. This time we sort of had this first move and then a lot of people were saying we're just gonna have liftoff going into the end of the year, but lengthening cycle theory would dictate, eh, probably not, right? We, we probably, probably have a ways to go. And now you look at this and it's hard to imagine us just going straight up over the next 30 days without going into 2022, okay? You might say, well, if it, if it mimics this, then it could. Yeah, it could, but the market capitalization today is a lot higher than it was back then. And you should also note that the angle of attack on the second peak here was similar to the first peak. So if you were to assume that the second, the, the angle of attack on the second theoretical wave is the same as the first one, then there's no way the market cycle peak is going to be in 2021. But again, I will provide an update on this model this month if we go up to this level. OK, so if we go up to this level, I'll provide an update, but I do not anticipate that happening uh, this month. The other analysis that we've done before is to speculate on on if it is a stretched out version of 2013, when could a theoretical market cycle top happen? Well, again, if you take the distance between the first peak here, the intermediate peak and the time between the intermediate peak and this peak and then take the ratios, it would come out to be July of 2022. So that's one, one way we could look at it, which I know is further out than some people think. If you think that's further out, if you take the number of days and you plot it versus peaks, and then you do an Arrhenius plot and look at one over days and fit that to a, uh, um, a function, you get August of 2023, which is probably too far out, right? It's probably too far out. Um, but I, I would say that I, I, I don't think the peak is in 2021. I think time is on our side. I think we have a ways to go here. And, and I know a lot of people want to predict the top 
and say that it's, you know, and they've been saying it all year, right? They want to say it's April, and then they want to say it's, it's September, and then they want to say it's October, and then they say it's November, and then now they're saying it's December. And then some people are already saying it's now January, and February, and March. And, and you know, there's always going to be another prediction of someone calling for when the market cycle top is. I think it's more important that we react to what actually happens on the chart rather than trying to claim we know exactly the date at which it's going to occur. Okay, so the general thinking though is that time is still on our side. Look, we're still not even at the all time high yet of 69K. So we need to get to that first. And then once we break above it, hopefully that'll start the second leg to the market cycle. But I, you know, I mean, so far over the last, you know, eight months or so, the new all time highs for Bitcoin have been relatively unimpressive, if we're being completely honest. And we, we need to be honest with ourselves. You know, it, it went to 58K, then 61, then 64, then 67, then 69. This is price discovery mode for ants, right? It's price discovery mode for ants. So what we really want to see is we want to see an actual price discovery mode by Bitcoin where it doesn't just go up a few thousand dollars, but it goes, you know, 70K, 80K, 90K, 100K. Maybe we get some temporary rejection off 100K, come back down a little bit, and then we shoot past it. And then we find us, you know, we go off into some market cycle peak somewhere above 100K, uh, maybe even as high as 200K for all we know. But I, I think that that is, a, is what's ultimately going to happen. But we're still sort of playing, you know, just sort of playing around right now. This isn't really the game. We're talking about practice. Um, and until, we, until we're sort of in that second leg where Bitcoin's decisively breaking out from its prior all-time high, then, you know, we're just kind of hanging out, right? I mean, we're, we're talking about market cycle theory. Everyone's claiming the peak's always one week away, one week away, three weeks away. All these just come, you know, they just keep not being true. Um, let's just see what happens, right? Let's just see how the chart unfolds as, as we continue to navigate this cycle. But the theory that we put out years ago is that the cycle will likely lengthen. And until we put in a new all-time high, we cannot claim victory on that yet. But I do think we will get a new all-time high. So um, going back to this chart, right? Uh, I think in general, right, in general, that the market cycle peak is going to be somewhere over here, All right? You can see that it, go, it does go into, into late 2021. I don't think the peak is in late 2021. I'm including that exclusively for the people that, that are, are determined it's going to spike up to, you know, to seven or $8 trillion as an asset class in the next 30 days, okay? I'm only including it because there's like a, there is a tiny probability that it could happen and we're not going to discount anything. But I think it's much more likely that it's somewhere out over here, not in the next 30 days, okay? Because now we are in December, okay? So I, as I've said before, I think that, you know, we're ultimately gonna go to these valuations. You know, I, I, I mean, 2022 is certainly a possibility, right? It's certainly a possibility. Before we wrap this up, I wanna remind you that we do have, um, uh, a lot of different channels you can follow. So we have Twitter, I have Twitter, follow me there. We have YouTube, make sure you subscribe, we have the Telegram channel. We also do have the premium list, okay, into the cryptoverse.com. I will leave the link down for the Black Friday sale, uh, you know, just after I push out this video. You can find that in the description below. I'll let that go on for a little bit longer, but we are wrapping that up today, okay? We're wrapping it up today so you can lock in the low rate if you want to, and you can follow this chart on the website, as, as well as a lot of other charts, risk metric charts, so on and so forth. So check it out in the description below and the pinned comment. Okay, so to, to wrap this up, as we always do, right? I think, I think that the market capitalization will ultimately go to approximately $10 trillion, right? Around 10 trillion, okay? Now, in order for us to get to 10 trillion on, on the log curve, then it means we need to go into 2022. So we're not there yet. We, this would say that 10 trillion is not possible this year because we just don't have enough time to get there, right? We just simply don't have enough time to get there this year. But if the cycle extends into 2022, then I, I, I do think we have, we have plenty of time uh, to get there and that time is ultimately on our side. So as I've said before, I think the market capitalization for the entire asset class will ultimately go to approximately $10 trillion this market cycle. 
plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends? Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to see these videos in the future, and I'll see you next time.